and we're recording. If there's a chance that you cannot hear me, please do that unmute thing and let me know. It's so good to have you at class. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to start in our usual way by finding our tall spine. So first, just have your feet on the floor, hands on your thighs, and lift through the crown of your head. Say good morning to your spine. Then give a little roll to the right shoulder and push it back and try the left shoulder as well. Feel the openness of your chest and its spaciousness. Try to maintain that for a few more moments. And then release. And now we're going to come back and restore that tall spine while we begin focusing on alignment. Grace is coming. I don't know if Grace is still in India or not. Um, I'll keep clicking on her. It's not coming in. Hmm. Let's see. Let's go here. Nope. Come on, Grace, you can do it. It says joining, and we'll hope for the best. Starting at the foundation, have your feet on the floor about hip distance apart. Then, toes straight ahead. Check that the knee is over the ankle for good alignment. It sets up the femur bone into the hip socket. Then, press down into your feet, feel the solidness of the floor and press down into your sit bones. Sometimes with a soft cushion or a seat, you don't really feel those hip bo sit bones. But if you pull some of the flesh away from the sit bones, you might be able to feel those sit bones pressing down right in the middle of uh, the chair seat. Grace is stuck. Just hope for the best. Now maintaining all those actions, I'd like you to place your hands on your thighs and lift through the crown of your head. Ah, oh, there we are, we're restoring that tall spine. Give a little roll to the right shoulder again and the left shoulder and sense those shoulder blades sliding towards the spine, not actually touching, but just pressing in the back ribs. Position your chin parallel to the floor. You always can pull the back of your head towards the wall behind you. And then look straight ahead and close your eyes. First, discover your inhale and exhale. Find that action. And today we're going to practice a pranayama uh, that um, is called Savitri. Savitri is the name of goddess of the sun and the seasons. And this breathing exercise consists of a four part rhythm. So you inhale gently, you hold your breath, you exhale, and then you pause your breathing. So don't get scared about holding the breath part. This is just a count of two counts on the inhale, one hold breath, two 
on the exhale and one on the pause. So it's like doing two poses for the one count. So I will um, guide you in this. So with your eyes closed, I would like you to take an inhale, count two, exhale, hold the breath, inhale, oh, I messed it all up. <laughs> Let's try it again. Inhale, two counts, pause, one count, exhale, two counts, pause, one count, inhale, two counts, Pause, one count. Exhale, two count. Pause, one count. So it's always two, one, two, one. There's not a lot of deep breathing in this breathing exercise, so don't overdo. Let's practice again without the cues from my vocalization. Try it in your mind, counting two, one, two, one. One. So start now. And relax your breathing. Now let's come to a little deeper breath. Inhale, pause, exhale. Draw more air on in the inhale. Exhale, extend a little longer. And then just come to the normal breathing pattern. So bring all your awareness to each inhale and exhale. These inhales and exhales now are shallow and short. Slowly and gently start to part the eyelids and let your eyes begin to focus and adjust to the light in the room. Let's uh, reevaluate our seated mountain pose. Oftentimes, when we come to breath work, we forget about the shoulders starting to drift down and our chest starting to sink in. So, let the shoulders lift up and let them roll back again and lift through the crown of your head. Let's come to our neck exercises. Lower your chin down to your chest. So you begin that stretch at the back of the neck, the cervical spine. Let that stretch spread into the upper back. Draw the chin forward. Start to lift the chin up and feel the stretch of skin on the front of your neck. Your eyes are gazing up as you continue to let that chin rise. Your head is dipping back and you may feel that tightening of skin. Now release that. Gently lower your chin down to your chest again. Try the stretch at the back of the neck. No need to go beyond what you can manage for your body. Please always be honest with what you can do. Now, slowly release the chin towards the chest. Bring it forward and lift it up one more time. Be 
feel that tightness on the front of your neck. Know that muscle is stretching, fascia is stretching, and that added bonus of a little massage in that thyroid gland. Lower your chin slowly down to center. Allow the right ear to fall to the right shoulder. Find that stretch on the left side of your neck. Oftentimes, I find that my left shoulder becomes tense. If yours does, soften it right down to the elbow. Sometimes that adds a bit of more stretch. Then draw your chin back to center and let the left ear fall to the left shoulder. Ah, here's another stretch on the right side of your neck. Go where you can manage. And if that right shoulder is tense, start to soften it. Lower it down to your elbow. Feel that stretch. Perfect. Bring your chin back to center. Turn your head to look over the right shoulder. Now you're incorporating some twisting of the neck muscle. Just use the amount of effort that is right for you and don't overdo. Now release gently to the front and center. Turn your head and look over the left shoulder. Try some squeezing, some twisting. and then release gently. Bring your chin back to center. Excellent. So now we're going to uh, do our shrugs with a concentration of uh, the shrug, the shoulder dropping down. So often we get used to exercises and the shrug just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, the lift will be the same, but let's give an extra moment to the dropping of the shoulder down. So just watch for a moment. So I shrug up and then I lower down and pull down a tiny bit more. So we'll go a little slower at the shrugs today. Lift the shoulders towards the earlobes, then lower down. Now pull those shoulders down some more. Let the shoulder blades point down to your back waist. All right, release. Try another shrug. Lift up to your ears and lower those shoulders down and give that extra press down on the drop of the shrug. We're going to try it two more times. Do the shrug, lifting the shoulders up towards the earlobe and then lower those shoulders down. Give an extra emphasis on that drop. And here's the last one. Shoulders up towards the ear and then lower the shoulders down, concentrating on that lowering of the shoulder and then release. Good. So next, we're going to do the shoulder roll. Let's just concentrate on our right shoulder. Lower your right arm down to your side. Do that shoulder shrug and then roll the shoulder back. If you miss that watching that shoulder blade, let's do it again. Lift that right shoulder up, roll the right shoulder back and put a concentration on that right shoulder blade moving towards the spine. We get to do it two more times with the sense of what's happening to that shoulder blade. Once you release, it becomes neutral, in neutral position again. Here's the last one, the final roll of that shoulder back. And then rest your hand back on the right thigh. Release the left hand, the arm is at your side. Do the lift of that left shoulder up towards your ear. Now roll that left shoulder back. I incorporate my arm a little bit to help with the momentum. Try it again. Awareness on the shoulder coming up towards the earlobe and rolling back. And this time, starting to sense the movement
of the shoulder blade. Now it's coming back to neutral position. Two more times with the lift of that shoulder up to the ear and then slowly bringing the arm back with the roll and bringing that arm back to a neutral position and do it one more time sensing that shoulder blade let arm and shoulder blade come back to starting point place your left hand back on your left thigh now we're going to come to some more in the shoulder we're going to try to ease some more tension in the shoulder so what I'd like you to do is think of your hands and curling the front parts of the fingers. Your knuckles will be bent and you're going to link the hands together by bringing those fingers together. So it looks something like this. So I'll show you again, my hands are flat, I'm curling the fingertips and then turning one palm to face the other palm and then I link the fingers together and then close them up a little tighter. Once you have your arm, your fingers linked together, lift the elbows to shoulder level if it's available to you. Now let the right shoulder lift up and the left shoulder point down. Let's change this. Left shoulder up, right shoulder <laughs> Left elbow up, right, show, right elbow down. Try it again, right elbow up, left elbow down. Right elbow down, left elbow up. Let's try it two more times. Left elbow down, right elbow up. Right elbow down left elbow up. Perfect. Then to release your linked fingers, bring your hands to the back of your head. Elbows are bent, pointing to right and left side. Press those elbows back towards the wall behind you. Press the elbows back to the wall behind you. Now hold it there and see what you feel. Shoulder blades toward the spine, a stretch through the oblique muscles that are the edges of your rib cage. Shoulders in use right now, uh, opening up all those muscles and stretching them from the shoulder joint through the upper arm. Then release your hands, lower your elbows, and let your hands rest on your thighs. Excellent work. Extend both arms forward. Interlace those fingers. Try to draw the elbows in right here. This is where you can stay. You don't have to go further. If you choose to, you can flip those palms and have the palms facing the camera. Try drawing those elbows in again to make your arms straighter and maybe you'll feel the bend in your wrists some more. Press the palm towards the camera. Good. Then flip the palms and before you release the fingers, check which index finger is on top and change the interlace so you have the other index finger on top. Touch thumbs, cross pinkies, as you know, and then extend arms forward. Stay here if you wish, but you know we're going to do the flip. So if you choose to, you can do the flip. Draw elbows in again to redo the pull of the elbow in. Feel the bend in your wrist, the squeezing of the fingers, the palms facing forward. Press a little more if it's available. Then flip the palms and release the interlace of your hands. Thank you. That was great.
Now we're going back to our seated mountain pose and we're going to bend those elbows again. So take your hands and this time bring your fingertips to your shoulders, lifting elbows up. So this time we're going to do a stretch of the oblique muscle on the left side. So the right elbow comes down toward your right side. Left elbow is pointing up. Then release. Let the left elbow come down towards your side. It doesn't have to touch. And then bring the right elbow up. Do you sense an opening in the armpit chest area? I hope you do. Let's try it again. Right elbow down towards your side, lifting the left elbow up. Feel the openness in this armpit chest. Remember, we always think about that lymph flow in that area. Lymph, of course, is all over your body with the circulation power like blood has. Now lower that left elbow as the right elbow lifts up. And then release and come back to neutral position where we started. Keeping your fingers on your shoulders Make circles with those elbows, four times forward, and then four times backward. And then finish up and have your elbows back in position. See if you can bring the inner elbow towards each other. Can they touch? You don't have to but just close and then open up again. Now, when we do it the second time, pay attention to your shoulder blades in the back body. Elbows start pointing to the right and left. Then draw those inner elbows towards each other. And now the shoulder blades should feel like they have spread to the outer edges of your rib cage. Now release with a concentration and awareness of those shoulder blades on your back body and they come towards the spine. Do one with all the knowledge of bringing those elbows in, how the body responds with the shoulder blades and then releasing out to the side and how your body positions the shoulder blades in this elbow extension. Next, we're raising those elbows up. Fingers stay on the shoulders and you lift the elbows up. Now press down into your sit bones and lift through the right and left side of the rib cage. It helps when those elbows go up. You feel the openness of the armpit as well as the stretch from the top of the pelvis towards those armpits. Then lower the elbows down all the way to the side body and release your hands. That was a lot of work. So let's massage the shoulder now. Take your right hand and bring it to your left shoulder. Have your left hand lift that right elbow up. Next, have your right fingers massage the shoulder joint along where the collarbone is. So you're getting close to the throat, the neck, the back of the neck. Just use those fingertips to dig in straight down or make little circles for massaging. That trapezius goes right to the base of your neck. It's a tough muscle. So make sure you massage enough. And then release. Take your left hand to the right shoulder. Take your right hand under the left elbow and lift it up. Now start at the shoulder joint and massage with your fingertips. Then along where the collarbone is and then up the side of the neck towards the throat. I'm reaching behind now getting into the back of the neck, the base of the neck, getting into that trapezius muscle, 
Whoa, mine is really tight this morning. Okay. So this massage uh, can be very valuable to loosen up all those muscles in the shoulder girdle. All right, and release. Next, we're going to come to hands, wrists, and fingers. So I'm coming up close. So separate your fingers, elbows are bent, and see if you can uh, work each finger separately so that the thumbs come towards the palm. Mine don't actually touch the finger, the thumb tip does not touch my palm, but I get in close. Then I release and then the index finger. Whoa, this one is a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> I'm not really touching. I hope some of you are. And then release. Then the middle finger, this is my champion middle finger, touching the palm. And then release. The ring finger is another champ, <laughs> touching the palm. And then release. And then try the pinky finger, touching the palm. All right. Now, see if you can circle the fingers. The, so start with the thumbs, go in both directions, maybe three or four times, then go to the index fingers three or four times, then the middle fingers. Fingers are still separated wide. Try the ring finger. Then the pinky finger. And then take your thumb, touch the index finger, then the middle finger, the ring finger, and then the pinky finger. Stretch fingers wide apart. And this time, start with the pinky finger, thumb and pinky finger touching, then ring finger, then middle finger, and then index finger. Stretch the fingers wide apart. And um, now we're going to uh, shake those hands out because we're go going to do wrist exercise. Not that that wasn't, but um, we're going to start with our hands, uh, the heel of your hands facing the camera. And I bent back my fingers to the wall behind me. So then I using the wrist to bring the hand hands forward and then press back. Oh, this one's hard. Press forward. I do try all these and it uh, <laughs> they're hard. Try one more. Then have your hands, your arms extended and open up and close. Open up and close, open up and close, open up and close, open up and close. One more, open up and close. Let's see. Now you have to turn your arms. So I have my palms flat, turn a little more, bend at the wrist. So now the fingers are pointing towards each other. Elbows are bent and press out and pull it out. One more, good. Shake those hands out. I have a curious cue here for me. It says, stretch the fist. I guess the only way I can interpret that. <laughs> stretch your arm forward, glue those four fingers of the right hand together. Thumb is extended yet. Take the left hand and stretch the wrist even though it's not the fist. I don't know how you do that. I'll have to look back and see what my other book says. 
good. Now, stretch the left arm, bring those left fingers close together, thumb is extended, take your right hand to those four fingers and stretch into the wrist. And then shake out. We're coming to our six spinal stretches and then we're coming to a forward bend. Keep your chairs the same direction. I will turn my chair. So hopefully you can see the difference between arching and rounding the back. So please create that tall spine again with your shoulders rolled back. Feel the spaciousness in your chest. First, we're going to round the upper back. Please just watch. The chin comes down, the shoulders dip down, and you start to create roundness in your upper back. Now to do that, I start creating a squeeze uh, kind of action in that trapezius that stretches broadly on our back ribs. Then after I've held it a few counts, I draw the chin forward and lift up, roll the shoulders back and start arching from the area between my shoulder blades to the front of my chest, lifting the hips up. Okay, and then you relax. So let's come to rounding and arching and do a set of four. Lower the chin down, let the shoulders drop, the head is down, and you're creating tension in the roundness of your back. Slide the chin forward, lift it up, roll the shoulders back, front ribs towards the ceiling, arching from that point between the shoulder blades. Round the back, bring your chin to your chest, pull tummy muscles in. Slide the chin forward, lift up, and arch the upper back. Lower the chin down to your chest, rounding that upper back. Slide the chin forward, lift up, and roll the shoulders back, arching from that middle point between the shoulder blades. Last one. Lower your chin, round the upper back. To provide tenseness of those muscles. Slide the chin forward and lift up and let the shoulders roll back, arching the upper back. Perfect, sit tall. And then we're going to come to side stretch and twist. Take your right hand and hold on to the side of your chair and lift that right arm straight up. Now lengthen on that left side. Press down in the left sit bone as you lift through your left fingertips. Keep that uh, pelvis even on your chair as you lean to the right. Now stay there a few moments to allow the uh, evolution of the stretch of maybe just skin, maybe the rib cage, maybe those obliques. Stay there a little more, counting five, four, three, two, one, and lift that arm up. Lower the arm down to hold on to the left side of your chair seat. Please lift the right arm up. Press down into the right sit bone and imagine or feel the stretch on the right side of the rib cage. Lean over to the left. Keep that right sit bone down and let this stretch, even if it's just the skin you feel, extending all the way to your fingertips. And then bring that arm back up and lower down. I'm hoping that that length of time gave you a better feel of stretch on the obliques. Next, we're twisting. So take your right hand to hold on the right side of your armrest of your chair or the chair seat. Bring your left arm across your chest and touch the outer right knee. Lift through the crown of your head and hold this tall spine. Now, three breaths, three little turns. Inhale, 
exhale, turn left shoulder towards right. Inhale, exhale, left shoulder to the right. Here's the last one, inhale, exhale, left shoulder to the right. Hold it there. Is there an ounce more of twist? Maybe not, it's okay. And release. Change sides of where your hands are positioned. So now the left hand is holding on to your armrest or chair seat, and the right hand is at the outer left knee. Grow tall again if you lost that tallness. Now remember, three little breaths, three little turns. Take an inhale, exhale, a little turn to the right. Nope, it's called the left. Take an inhale, exhale, a little turn to the left. Last time, take an inhale. Think about that right shoulder coming to the left. And hold there for a few moments. Find the twisting power of the spine. And then release, unwind, and come back to center. Good job. Now we're coming into that forward bend. So remember, you're not sitting at the back rest of your chair at all. And there should be some space behind your back. Now I have a backless chair, but most people don't. They have some kind of support in the backrest. So you have to be careful the way you're going to situate uh, yourself towards the front edge of your chair with knees bent, feet on the floor. Roll the right shoulder back and the left shoulder back. See if you can interlace fingers behind you. Now this is the place that you could stay. Uh, if this interlacing of fingers is not available, maybe you can hold on to the intersection of the back rest and your chair seat, maybe right there. So there's an option. Now I'm going back to hand, fingers interlaced. I'm rolling my right shoulder back and my left shoulder back. I always need that. So perhaps you can warm up those shoulders again to push back shoulder blades to the spine. Then take an inhale, lift up tall to the crown of your head and lean forward. Now the thighs do not touch the chest. So you don't have to lean forward a lot. But what you need to do Extend your arms back behind you. So you're pulling those shoulder blades away from the front of your body. Now, of course, you could do this with arms resting on your back body and pulled down. Or, like I suggested, perhaps lift the arms away from the back body and pull at a diagonal line. Then release your hand and sit up tall. So this time, instead of having the arms, uh, the fingers interlaced or pulling onto the chair, I'm going to ask you to just extend your arms behind you. So look at the camera. So I know I have a backless chair. So uh, I'm going to ask you to extend your arms back, lean forward, and as more space is created behind you, you might be able to lift your hands. So let's try it. Sitting tall first, arms behind you, and leaning forward, but extending the arms at a diagonal level, or maybe go higher at a straight level, but pulling the shoulders back. Now pull tummy muscles in as you lean forward for some of our belly work. Then release, sit up tall and bring your arms forward. We're going to continue often, not often, most of the time, that's the same words. <laughs> when you fall forward, the abdo lower abdominals are working. Uh, this time, we're going to do a leg extension with a back flexion. So please 
book to see what this is about. So I'm holding on to the sides of my chair. You could hold on to the armrest. I'm trying to sit up tall and I'm going to bring my right foot up to the level that I can manage. Then I'm leaning forward. Whoa, does that quadricep work hard? And you're getting a back extension, flexion as well. And then bring that leg back in. Then we'll alternate to the other side. All right, sitting tall, hands on your armrest or chair seat. Slide that right heel forward, lift up, and then begin to lean forward. That quadricep has to work to keep that leg up. And you're extending from the lower spine through the rest of your spine with your back body. Then bend that knee and lower that foot down. Let's try the left side. So I'm sitting tall, I'm sliding the left heel forward, and then I lift that left leg up. Then I lean forward, pulling the tummy muscles in as I get a back flexion and a leg extension. And then lower that foot down. Lean back now, rolling the shoulders back, and start one leg coming in to do a single bicycle action. Lower that foot down. And now do the other leg. Good. Sit up tall. And now we'll try that leg extension and back flexion again. So lift that right leg and start to lean forward again. And release. Lift the left leg only to the level that you can manage, and then lean forward. Good. And release. Now come back, and instead of doing single alternating bicycles, maybe do both. You can also do singles. And then lower down. Then think about the right leg extension and leaning forward. Pull tummy muscles in and then lower that foot down. Lift the left leg, lean forward, pull tummy muscles in. And then relax, sitting tall, but then going back. And this time, alternate using one leg to pedal forward and the other one right behind it, pedaling. Good, and lower those feet down. Next, we're going to place hands under the right thigh, bring the knee up and extend that lower right leg, press into the heel, find that calf muscle right away. Point your toe, press into your heel, rotate the ankle around. Try the other direction. Then bend the knee and lower that foot down. Hands under that left thigh. Bring that left knee up. Extend the lower left leg. Point, flex. Point, flex. Rotate the ankle. Try the other direction. Good. And then bend the knee and lower that foot down. Last week we did a massage on our legs. I'd like to do it again this week. Take both hands around the right front knee and massage around that knee. Go up and down the knee or around the knee, whatever suits this initial movement of massage. Then go down to the calf muscle, up and down with your hands. Getting a boost in the circulatory system. Then slide those hands up and plant those fingers into the fleshy area behind the kneecaps. And massage. You'll feel two tendons. I think it's two tendons. And uh, massage. Using your thumbs on the inner and outer thigh. Outer knee. 
try the other direction too. Then slide your hands along the front, nope, not wrong word, the right outer thigh and the right inner thigh. Just boosting up energy. Then slide your hands to the right side of the pelvis. See how your hands are getting really warm. That's a sign that you're working hard. And then release your hands and feel a difference of sensation from the right to the left knee and leg. So try taking both hands to the left kneecap and rotating around that kneecap, going up and down on the sides. Then slide your hands down to the calf muscle. Massage again. Then slide those hands to under the kneecap. Dig your fingers right into that area as your thumbs on the outside massage the right and the left side of your kneecap. Both hands sliding down to the calf muscle. Then hands sliding to the inner and outer thigh. And then going to that left side of the pelvis. Then bring your feet back to center. Reach for your belt now, please. Slide your right heel forward and position your belt at the bottom of your shoe or foot and then extend the sides of your belt with one hand on each side. Sit tall as you press into that right heel and pull with the belt. A lot of energy is flowing here, a lot of traction, sitting down, uh, lifting up that heel to hip level and lowering down. Lift and lower, pull, pull, pull on that belt. One more time and lower that heel down. Take the left side of your belt into your right hand. Take the left hand to hold onto your armrest or your chair seat. Sit tall, pull on the belt, flex into the heel, lift that right leg to hip level and swing it out to the side and back in, out to the side and back in. All right, swing it out one more time, lower the heel and lift up, working hamstrings, a lot of the other leg muscles as well. Lift up, swing back in, bend the knee and lower that foot down. Transfer your belt to the bottom of your left foot or shoe, right in the middle. Line up the sides of your belt and walk your hands down. Hold on as you press into that left heel and pull with the belt. Lift that heel off the floor four times to hip level and lower down. Hip level and lower down. Then take the right side of your belt into the left hand while the right hand holds onto the chair seat or your armrest. Sitting tall, lift that leg and swing it out to the side. Get ready, swing it out and lower that heel down and lift up, working hamstring muscles. Good, swing that leg back in, bend the knee and release the belt, put it to the side. And we have one more leg exercise. So take your hands to your armrest or your chair seat. Slide that right heel forward. Now lift that right heel off the floor and make small circles and medium sized circles and large circles. 
Now reverse, large circles. Remember, you're pressing into your heel like it's a pointed uh, pencil. Now try medium size and then small. Bend that knee and lower that foot down. Slide the left heel forward, lift it up to hip level, press into the heel as you draw with your heel. We're starting with large size dinner plates and then come to medium size and then little saucers. All right, go the other direction. Little saucers, medium, and large. Oh, mine look like flat, uh, platters. <laughs> All right, bend the knee and lower that foot down. We're coming to goddess pose. So here's our squat today. So stretch your legs apart, have toes angled um, so that the knee and the toe are going in the same direction. Hands on your thighs and lift those heels up and lower down. Are you pressing the inner knee to the outer knee? I know you're all saying, yes, of course we are. Lift those heels. Lift those heels. Lift those heels. Now, keep the heels down. Sit tall. Extend your arms. Lift the palms. Bend the elbows. So now we have cactus arms. But if they're, those cactus arms are feeling too comfortable, press your elbows to the wall behind you to open the chest. Press the inner knee to the outer knee to open up through the inner thighs. Goddess pose. And then try a little twist. You don't have to go far, but just try a little twist right and the left. Did those knees fall in? Naughty, naughty. Keep those knees pressed out and away from each other. And then lower your hands down and heel, toe your feet in. We're coming to lunge where uh, you walk your feet over to the armrest on the right and have that right outer thigh bump right into that uh, armrest that you have. Or you can go all the way over to the right side. Push your left hip off the chair, but keep the right hip bone immediately pressing down on it. Put your right hand on the backrest of the chair as you slide your left knee down to the floor, making a 90 degree angle. Sit tall. And here we have a lunge. If you're not feeling a stretch in that quadriceps, slide that left toe back, keep sitting tall. Then release, bring that leg back in, come to the front or uh, I should say, and go to the left armrest, bump your outer left thigh against it, or just turn completely without the obstacle of an armrest. Take your left hand to the back of the chair, scoot off that right sit bone as you slide that right toe back. So in your camera, you should see my front knee is at a almost 90 degree, uh, 90 degree angle and your bent right knee down toward the floor is also a 90 degree angle. Sit tall and maybe lift an arm up. Maybe two arms, maybe no arms. Who decides? A warrior one. Seated. Lower your hand and slide that foot back in. Next, we're coming to sit to stand. Ukatasana. Let me go sideways. And we practice some forward bending. First, recover in your seated mountain pose. And with your hands, Still on the thighs, lean forward. Good. Now
Now extend the arms at shoulder. Lean forward. Now let's bring those arms up a little more where you can manage. Lean forward. And then come up and lower those arms down. Next, we're coming to that sit position, what we're in now, into a, a chair position. So please watch. It'll look like this. Arms at shoulder level, leaning forward, lifting the buttocks off the chair, standing in a modified chair pose, Utkatasana, and then lowering down to the chair. Okay, remember the chair doesn't move. You're the moving target here. All right, here we go again. I didn't give you the cue of moving your feet back, but mine uh, didn't go back as far as I wanted them to, but it felt so all right to me. So you see how your, fit figure, your feet will figure into this. So mine are parallel, about hip distance apart, toes straight ahead but the heels are not pulled back towards the chair. I'm going to come into a forward bend. So I lean slightly forward. I extend my arms at shoulder level. Press into your feet, lift off the chair, and lower back down if you can. Now, perhaps make your hands staying on your thighs, or you welcome the uh, extension of your arms from your shoulder. Well, we're going to do the high arms next. If you choose not to do that, it's okay. Perhaps you'd like to just have your hands on your thighs. Or maybe you can bring one arm crossed and then the other arm. Uh, or just hold on. Uh, you can do this behind your chair and just hold on. So think about what your body would like to do. Come behind your chair or in front of your chair. So I am ready. I am going to use extended arms to the ceiling. Maybe you use arms from the shoulder. Maybe your hands would be on, uh, I don't know, on the chair. So lean forward. Go only where you can manage. Maybe you never press into your feet and lift up. But maybe you do and you lift up in a Ukatasana chair pose, and then lower down. And bring your arms. Good. We're coming into Tadasana and downward facing dog, a warrior three with a bent knee. Life is good, and then we'll do Shavasana. All right, behind your chair, please. <laughs> So you're standing tall. With your feet about hip distance apart. And you're pressing down into your feet. Big toe mound, little toe mound, inner and outer heel. Lift through the crown of your head now. That's it. Good. Tadasana. Maybe you'd like to roll those shoulders back a little bit. I always like knowing that my chest is open and spacious, so the shoulder blades are toward the spine. Okay, relax that. And uh, I have to turn towards the back of my chair. And I'm back in Tadasana, so come back to that Tadasana. And we're going to stretch the whole spine. Holding on, walk back. And don't go too far because you want your arms extending. You want to press into the sit bones. You'll feel the hamstrings. Your knees can soften if you feel those hamstrings. But remember, a little bit of a stretch is good for those hamstrings. Now walk forward. We'll do one more. And then we're going to extend the right leg back. Tadasana. Walk back. Press into the sit bones. Now, if you can't be um, standing, you can be sitting at on a chair and just extending forward. That's 
also a modification. Slide your right toe back. Stay right there if you choose, or lift up a little higher. So the add-on for this, put your toe back down, is bending the knee and bringing the heel towards the buttocks. Do you have to do that? No. no. But it's a little add-on. So the right leg is extended back. You can lift up the toe off the floor and challenge your balance a little bit. You can lift up higher and bend your knee if you choose and bring that heel towards your hip. And then extend back out and lower that foot down. Walk towards your chair. Here's the last one. Walk your feet back. Press into the sit bones. Left leg is sliding back. Stay here if you don't want to do anything else. It's fine. Or you can lift the toe off the floor to challenge your balance. Or you can go up higher. You can add on the bend of that left knee with the heel towards the foot. Then extend your leg, then lower it down and bring that foot in. Lean forward, not lean, walk forward and stand up into Tadasana. Come and sit down. You did a lot of hard work today. In fact, it was excellent work today. Find your seated Tadasana. Look through the crown of your head. Allow the shoulders to roll back. Feel the sit bones pressing down into your chair seat. And your feet are solid on the floor or carpet. Look straight ahead and close your eyes. Find your breath again. Remember what we practiced today? Two count on the inhale. Pause. One count. Two count on the exhale. One count. Pause. See if you can find that again. I'm reading from my book, Your True Home, The Everyday Wisdom of Thich Nhat Hanh. Today, he talks about concentration. When you comp contemplate the big full sunrise, the more mindful and concentrated you are, the more of the beauty of the sunrise is revealed to you. Suppose you are offered a cup of tea very fragrant, very good tea. If your mind is distracted, you cannot really enjoy the tea. You have to be mindful of the tea. You have to be concentrated on it so the tea will reveal its fragrance and wonder to you. That is why mindfulness and concentration are such sources of happiness. That's why a good practitioner knows how to create a moment of joy, a feeling of happiness at any time of day. Bring your namaste hands together at your heart. Let the intelligence of your brain bow to the wisdom you find in your loving heart. And to close our class, May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you enjoy another glorious day of warmth and sunshine. Lift your chin, open your eyes, smile, and namaste, my friends. Thank you so much for coming to class today. It was an honor to have you in class, and it always makes my heart very joyful. So thank you so much. And... I will see you, let's see, uh, 
Gentle Chair Yoga is on Friday at 10. I do Sit and Be Fit on Thursday at 1. And Drums Alive, Sit Down version, uh, 10 a.m. on Thursday, on Saturday. Oh, dear, you're probably all confused. Now. <laughs> Just look at your calendar. You'll find it. <laughs> we'll find you, Noreen. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I'm ending the meeting. Bye uh, now. Bye, everyone. <laughs>